brand new series today. It's called Standing in Vision. Say that with me. Standing in Vision. A lot of the ideas I'll get for series is when people talk to me. I talk to our staff. We work together. But at the end of the day, it's me putting a message together, and that's what happens. Sometimes I'll get a letter or a song I'll hear. Who knows? Or a, an experience that I go through. And out of that, the Word of God can speak to all kinds of issues that we face in our life. That's the beautiful thing about the Bible. Amen? So, here's a brand new series. It's called Standing in Vision. And so the next many weeks, several weeks, maybe six, eight weeks, because we're going to have some guests coming in and out of here, some singing groups. But I'm going to try to, in the second service, always be talking about vision. So let's go with the message this morning and see what we can find. There's some, some good-looking stuff right there. Come on, look at that. Look at that. Crazy. That looks like our property years ago, Raj. You know? God has the best vision. Say that with me. God has the best vision. That's the title of my first message in this new series. And we'll see where it goes. And Rod, you just push me if you don't mind. I appreciate it. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Say that with me. Where there is no vision, the people perish. One more time. Where there is no the people We ever get to the place where we don't care for people. And people don't matter. This church will be on a downward trend. That's for sure. Amen? And that's where we are in our country. People should matter. Okay? Your neighbors. People should matter. Where there's no vision, people perish. Okay? So let's talk about vision today. See what we can find. When I preach, I usually do a couple of things. I use my Bible. I've got an old black Bible I use. And then I'll use a Webster's Dictionary. Amen? Because I'm from the country and I need help with a dictionary sometimes. Amen? So what's the word vision mean? Well, obviously, it's a sense of what? Okay, how's your vision? Is it 2020? Whatever. So we know that one. It's a sense of sight. But when you look in Webster's, it also says supernatural apprehension. Say that with me. Supernatural apprehension. Or it's foresight to have vision, to look down the road, to see what's ahead, perhaps. Now, a visionary, if you keep looking in Webster's Dictionary, you see what a visionary is. Webster's not too nice to people who are visionaries. Look at what he said about a visionary. Fanciful. He did say apprehended by supernatural means. But then look how he keeps going. Unreal. An impractical person. A dreamer. A visionary. And you know, if you really think about it, most people who start something or who have great plans and they can see it, most people think they're stupid. You understand? Most people think, ah, you're just dreaming. Ah, it'll never what? Happen. It won't work. Isn't that true? So Webster's Dictionary and his, his, his uh, definition is just coming from what we really think about visionaries. Amen? So, as we move forward, keep looking. Now, what's vision to me mean? Vision to me. What does vision to me mean? Here's what it means to me. It means to see supernaturally by supernatural means through being apprehended by a supernatural God. Does that make any sense? Come on, let's say it together. To see supernaturally by supernatural means through being apprehended by a supernatural God. And we're going to do it one more time and let it sink in. Vision. That's what we want to talk about. New series, Standing in Vision. God has the best vision as the title of the message. And we're going to get there. But first of all, let's just figure out what vision is. One more time. Pop it up. One more time. Back it up. Help me to see supernaturally by supernatural means through being apprehended by a... And now let's move it forward. Keep moving. To me, it means seeing dreams become reality. Even though they seem unreal, impractical, and fanciful. One more time. It's seeing dreams become what? Even though they seem unreal, impractical, and just fanciful. 
You can see them happen. And one day, you'll be standing in it. You'll be standing inside of a vision. Did I lose you this morning so far or not? You think Clark's gone crazy. Keep with me. Can't hang in here with me. To me, vision is seeing what God sees. Seeing what God sees. Many people grow up thinking, excuse my language, that they're just a piece of crap. Excuse me. It's because that's the way they see themselves. That's the way they've been told. Does God see them that way? Not at all! He sees them so valuable. He sees them that they matter so much, so much worth. So vision is seeing, seeing what God sees. And I'm getting a little off track here. But you know I've never seen heaven. But because God's Word tells me about it, I've sort of seen it. Because I'm seeing what God sees. And though my mother, I loved her more than anything, she was murdered 21 years ago. I can see mama. Mama's alive. Mama's in heaven. Mama's with the Lord. How do I do that? Vision. I see as God sees. Are y'all hearing me or not this morning? It's a little different message series. We're going to go down a path and we'll see. So it's seeing as God sees. But something I've said for years, and I want you to learn it with me. Say it with me. God is God and I am not. Guys, you really need to be grounded. And this vision idea is great. We can talk about vision. But so many people say they see things. And they almost come across as God sometimes. Okay? I don't know if you got that or not. Remember, you're not God. Y'all listening to me, yes or no? You're not God. Okay? God's God and I am not. Keep looking. Pop it up, Raj. God is supernatural and I am what? I am not. Okay? I'm not supernatural. That's why I need his supernatural book called the Word of God. Amen? Because it is supernatural. Amen? You're listening to me. His Word is quick, powerful. Is this what the Bible says? God's Word is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Does it say that? Piercing even to dividing asunder of joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our what? Heart. Amen. So, for me to see what God sees, hang in here with me in case you're like, he's, he's losing me. I'm ha just hang on. Don't fall off the planet yet. For me to see what God sees, if vision is seeing what God sees, I must see through eyes of what? Say it again. I must see through eyes of? One more time. I must see through eyes of? If I'm going to see what God sees, I'm certainly not going to do it just humming. I'm not going to do it with just my own works or what I can do or look at me. No, I'm going to have to see through eyes of faith. I'm going to have to believe in the supernatural. I'm going to have to put my faith and trust in Him. Eyes of faith. It's just still me talking with you this morning. Eyes are, of faith are born. How do I get eyes of faith, Pastor? How do I see? How do I have vision? How do I have this supernatural? How can I see? When other people, oh, you're just dreaming, you're impractical. There was a guy years ago, like in the early 1900s, his name was Gypsy Smith. He was on a train. He was well known. He was a well known evangelist around the world. Late 1800s, early 1900s. Now, you normally don't tell stories, but it's a pretty good story. He's sitting on a train. Guy sits next to him. He starts talking about Jesus. A little bit about that. And the guy says to him, You don't believe all that Bible stuff, do you? About knowing the flood and Jesus and going to heaven. He said, You're just dreaming, man. And Gypsy Smith said, If I'm dreaming, let me dream on. And I can't remember the song. I'll sing it sometime. But it, it's called Let Me Dream On. Seeing with eyes of faith. I want to be known as a dreamer. Amen? Without vision, without dreams, without hopes, people perish. Amen? So let's keep looking. So eyes of faith are born. How do I get eyes of faith, Pastor? Through hearing 
and then believing what God says is true. See, I might not believe what you say sometimes. Because if it contradicts God's Word, I'm going to give Him the benefit of the doubt and not you. You understand? Say. And I hope you'll do the same thing with me. If you hear me preach sometimes, say, well, that's sort of kooky. That ain't in the Bible. That ain't right. Good. Don't believe me. Okay? I don't have it all down pat. Okay? Come on. But how do you really get faith? Faith. Eyes of faith are born through hearing and then believing what God says is truth. Now let's explore that just a little bit. We're walking. We're getting somewhere. Hang on. What's the Bible say about what I just said? Faith comes by what? And hearing what? It didn't say hearing your favorite preacher. Some preachers will tell you what you want to hear. What sounds good. Faith doesn't just come through what sounds good. Okay, faith comes through hearing, and hearing what? The Word of God. How do you get faith? It comes through hearing, and hearing what? That's how faith happens. That's how faith happens. If you want this kind of faith. The Bible says faith is the substance of things what? Hoped for. It's the evidence of things what? Not seen. And by the way... By it, by what? By faith, the elders, or all these heroes that we see in the Bible, obtained a what? They believed God. And you know what? After all these years, people come back and say, wow, and now these people are heroes because they believed God. Through faith, here's the granddaddy of them all right here. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. So that the things which are seen were made, were not made of things which do appear. Here's the point. Pastor, do you believe this world came to be and all mankind came to be out of nothing? I absolutely believe that. You mean you believe that God spoke it and it came to be? I absolutely believe that. Or you expect me to believe something just blew up. Bang! Slime. Slime became something. Something started crawling. And here we are. Hello. It's the dumbest thing on the planet. It's the dumbest thing on the planet. It's the dumbest thing on the planet. I could care less who teaches it, who says what. Here's the bottom line. God said in the first verse in the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Who am I going to believe, him or you? And by the way, after all these years, men are getting smarter and smarter. And with all the technology and good stuff in the last couple hundred years, the crazy smarts of mankind, especially the last 150 and even 20, hmm, we're hearing more of these smart people believe that this couldn't come to be without intelligent design. Just like God said in verse 1 of the Bible. Amen. Why do I believe in creation? That God created the heavens and the earth and He created man out of dust and He breathed into the nostrils of man and man became a living soul. You know why I believe that? Because God said it. But you know now after all these years, I have no problem seeing God do that. Because I'm now seeing through eyes of faith. Did I lose you again? I have no problem seeing it being total darkness and God saying, let there be light. And it was all lit up. Maybe you've got a problem with that. I've got a lot bigger problem with something blowing up and here we are. Come on, man. Eyes of faith. The Bible says without faith, it's what? It's impossible to please Him. That Him is God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that He is. And I love this last part. Watch it. And he is a what? To them that what? 
you believe in God, you put your faith in God, you put your trust in God, you put your hope in God, I'm going to tell you something. He's going to reward you. I'm not talking about money and stuff. I'll take, I'll take the fact that I know where I came from, that He made me. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Man, I'll take that over any money any day. To know that Gary Clark has value, that I matter, that though I grew up just in a home that didn't teach me any worth or any value whatsoever, I can stand before you now today after all these many years and tell you that I know that I matter, that He loves me, that I have purpose on this planet, that I am somebody, I can do good things and even great things for God. How could that happen? Faith. Believing. Did I lose you again? Are you going to sleep on me? Say. Come on. You feel like you're watching PBS or something? <laughs> Let's go. Here we go. So, I wanted to get all that down. We won't do this every week. That same little talk. But God has the best vision. Say that with me. God has the best vision. Why I want to believe this joke over here that says this happened when it didn't happen? He can't even see squat. God has the best vision. I want to see what God sees. Amen. Say, I want to believe, I want to know what truth is. Beautiful. I want to go down a trail now. How many know Nita Turner? How many would raise your hand and say, I know Miss Nita. I've met her before. I've seen her. There she is on the left. There she is sitting up front. She was here in one of our services. One only in this new building. Nita wrote me a letter. And I hope you don't mind. I want you to sit still and get comfortable because I'm going to read you a pretty long letter. You okay? But it's, it's not just for me, guys. And it's complimentary to me, and I thought about not even reading it, but it really speaks to all of us. Nita, who is Nita? Well, Nita and Stefan used to listen to me on the radio. They live in Bradenton, Florida, which is about 45 minutes, 50 minutes from here at least. Her husband's a civil rights attorney for the Army. Has been for many years. He retired. Now he's working in a whole other branch of the, the uh, Department of Defense. His name is Stefan. How many know Stefan? You saw him recently come. He's my friend. They live in Orlando now. Nita was at one time the head of ICU, one of the head nurses up at Sarasota Memorial Hospital in ICU. They listened to me on the radio. Stefan one Sunday morning. Doesn't know me from anybody. He drives down here. Comes to church at the high school. Not long after, he brings his wife. I had the pleasure of seeing him come to Christ. I had the pleasure of baptizing Stephan, myself, uh, down in the ocean. And so they've been with us for a while. I want you to know that. Now they live in Orlando, got transferred. I talked to Nita this week. I said, Nita, I'm going to use your letter. I'm going to read, because this will be on YouTube. People will watch it all over. Be on radio. And I just wanted to tell her what I was doing. And I said, are you going to be in church in Orlando, in a church? She said, probably not. She has lupus. And really sick. And I love her. It made her day to know that I was going to use this today. And I want you to hear it today. It's a gift from God. A letter of encouragement by Nita Turner. And that's what she put on it. She said, a letter of encouragement. I didn't change a thing on this thing. Here we go. December 15th, 2015. Stay with me. Don't get too far ahead of me now. Pastor Gary, I get excited each time I walk into the new church building. Because as I have said before, I realize, say it with me, I'm standing in a vision. I've never heard such a statement as that in my whole life as I read this letter. And so she told me that one time not long ago. And so she says, you asked me what that means to me. And I did. I said, what does that mean? Would you think about and drop me a note or a paragraph what that means? Well, it's more than a paragraph. Here we go. You asked me what that means to me. To start, I have never, ever personally been a part of an accomplishment of this magnitude. 
It was a normal Sunday visit to Fellowship Church in the Lemon Bay High School Auditorium. As usual, Stephan and I had driven from Bradenton and was happy to see you and all of our friends that morning. We had a great worship service. Then you introduced your vision prior to your message delivery. You said we were going to build a church and we would do it, what? Debt free. As the room erupted in applause, I joined right in with everyone else, wearing a big smile and clapping hard. However, shortly after we all sat down, I thought, is he kidding? There's no way. This is the worst time in America to try to do something like this. The economy had recently crashed tremendously. Millions of Americans had lost homes, businesses, jobs, and life savings. Many local businesses were folding all around of us, and marriages and, and families were being destroyed because of the horrific loss. I thought everybody's broke, and he chooses today to decide to tackle something like this in this little American town of Inglewood, Florida, with a population of 14,800. It's not going to happen. No one had extra money to spare, and then you said we would do it debt-free or, or die. When you said that, I feel, felt really sorry for us <laughs> because I was convinced there were about to be mass funerals held in this little town, leaving it pretty much desolate. <laughs> However, each Sunday after that, as you brought strong teachings and through your own displays of great faith in the Lord regarding this vision, I actually began to believe in it somewhat myself. Sunday after Sunday, as outrageous as the whole thing originally seemed to me, I began watching the other members start believing also. Before I knew it, we were all believing. And not just saying it, but we were shouting it with conviction. Come on! Boom! Craziness! I then shifted my prayers, watch it, I then shifted my prayers heavy in that direction. And that's when something changed in my heart, allowing your vision to become my vision also. That's when I knew we could do it. We all began giving financially as much as possible. And a lot of the men and women, by the way, began helping with the physical work to clear the land, etc. Tell them hello. In the meantime, you kept us updated on our progress regarding permits, land excavation, financial proceeds received from around the country, etc. This kept us going and believing because it allowed us to pinpoint our prayers where they were needed most, especially when there was some sort of challenge causing delays. We stood arm in arm, spiritually praying and giving both financially, and many gave physically of their time and skill, slowly chipping away at what seemed like an enormous concrete rock. As a child, I was taught that although concrete is indeed very hard, if you place it under a perpetual drop of water, eventually a dent will occur in that spot. Gary, that's what we did. Your vision was God's vision in a man who chose to avail his heart unselfishly and completely to the Lord. Your faith and determination seemed downright crazy at first. But God reminded me of the stories in the Bible where people did the ridiculous to achieve the outrageous. Is that a great line right there? Can we thank the Lord for that good line right there? Come on. I was reminded of Abraham, who finally received the son God promised, yet he was prepared to destroy him at the risk of losing all his promised dreams. And because of his faith and obedience to God, his son was spared and Abraham became the father of a mighty nation. Noah, who built a crazy looking ship on dry land, was laughed at and mocked, but ultimately saved mankind during the flood. Esther, a foreigner who risked death by entering the king's court unannounced, humbly changing the mind of that king, which saved her people. Moses, who led the people to freedom across the desert and the sea after battling the Egyptian with God's power and a wooden staff. David, a scrawny, ruddy young teen, killing the giant with one shot using a small, smooth stone, while Saul's entire mighty soldiers stood there trembling in all of their heavy armor. Finally, and among so many other examples, let's not forget Joshua, bringing the walls of Jericho down by marching and shouting, no arrows required. The list goes on and on. How y'all doing so far? Yeah. 
We're not done yet. Isn't this a great letter? Proverbs 29, 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law, happy is he. Isaiah 32, 8, But the noble make noble plans, and by noble deeds they stand. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight or direct your path. Finally, Philippians 4, 13, I can do everything through Him who gives me strength, or I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Y'all cool so far? Keep looking. Gary, I can do all things in Christ. Had to take on new meaning for you. It certainly took on new meaning for me during this time. Not only did we watch you along with others sacrifice over and over again in order to stay the course during a very challenging time with the church, but we also watched you battle through the very difficult personal challenges placed in your path. Because of your great hope and faith in the promises of God, you never lost the vision. You never gave up. You stayed the course. You didn't just preach that we can do all things in Christ who gives us strength. You showed us. I know you're a man who avoids accolades, which is another sign of God-given humility. But I personally admire and hold you in great esteem. Not just because you're Gary, our friend, and a godly man so deeply loved by my husband and myself, but also because you showed me the difference between simply knowing the path and walking the path. Therefore, the church building in my heart represents a true testament to what God can do when just one man or woman makes the wise choice to surrender their will, believe and sometimes blindly allow the Lord to work through them. I thank God first for giving you such a vision, and I personally thank you for availing your heart to receive it, and then injecting that same energy in us so we could take it and run with it. Because of this, we are standing in its result. The church building, that is why I say, say it with me, I am standing in a vision. A vision is a bridge between the present and the future. Those without vision spend their lives taking the path of least resistance as they try to avoid discomfort. If you had not stayed the course, your vision would have become nothing more than a pipe dream. Instead, we all got to see and partake in the power of God's strength working in all of us through faith, making that vision our reality too. Habakkuk 2, 2 and 3 says, then the Lord answered me and said, Record the vision and inscribe it on tablets that the one who reads it may run. Gary, me, in that verse was you, because God chose you to receive the vision. Also, the one who reads it was us, because we believed it and we ran with it, and here we are standing in its result. Finally, I love you, Gary. You're my brother. Please be encouraged to know that, again, I love you not only for what you've achieved, but because of who you've become in Christ. You're indeed a mighty warrior for Him. You've inspired many, and especially me, to keep believing. Never give up, and that no matter what challenges I face in my personal or professional life, I can also do all things in Christ who gives me strength. Thanks for helping me believe. Love your sister in Christ. Nita Turner. Can we thank the Lord? Amen. Amen. Wow. Well, that didn't sound like that bored you to tears, did it? Did, how many of you felt that was you? Wasn't that you? Wasn't that you? Wasn't it that just felt like, boy, but that's the team. Amen. It was beautiful. I love that. Obviously, I, did, I was uncomfortable reading all the nice things she said about me. But you know what, I'm, a different, I'm in a different place over the last several years. I need to hear that sometimes. And I need to read it and not ever let it go to my head and think I'm something. But you know, I need encouragement too. You know? And, and I've been receiving that. And that felt good for me. That's something I don't think I've ever done, read something that nice, that somebody said something that nice about me. I've never, I'll read about my mother, I'll read about you, but not me. Boy, that's vision too, baby. Amen. Come on. That's a good thing. Amen. So, having said all that, where are we going now with the message? Because the Vikings are coming on. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Hang on.
as we start this new series, I didn't want to get off in Cuckooville land. Cuckoo land. Because you can. You can, oh, God said and God said and God I saw and God said. If you're not careful, you can get off in la-la land somewhere. Amen? Are y'all listening or not? Just turn on your TV later and you'll see a lot of la-la land out there, okay? Okay, from the, from the Christian network or whatever. So that's why I said God has the best vision. As we embark on this series, I don't want you to ever forget the first thing we said, the first message we ha said is God has the best vision. We want to base any vision we have on Him, okay? And on that He is truth. And we want to see what God sees. Because God ain't kooky. Are you listening? Say, come on. Now, some things he said is hard. It's craziness. I know. But one thing he ain't is kooky. Amen? He's all-knowing. So God sees everything from his throne above. God has the best vision. So I went through the Bible, and I'm just going to give you several of these real quick. You can get them online if you want. Uh, hear it again. Write them down. Go to our notes. Whatever. But I just did it for us briefly. God has the best vision. Number one. God sees everything from His throne above. Okay? The Lord is in His holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, His eyelids try the children of men. God has the best vision. Why would I believe in the beginning God created heaven? Because He's got the best vision, Jack. Amen. Say. You understand or not? I'm going to believe Darwin. Are you kidding me? I stood on his grave and said, you were wrong. I did that in England. I did. I did. Sorry. Gave God credit. Come on. What a big lie. How many people led down to a devil's hell? Are you hearing me say? Somehow if I can get you to disbelieve God right out of the gate, the devil says. Well, we're going to fight that. Number two, God sees my forming and my birth. God has the best vision. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. For thou hast possessed my reign. Say it with me. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. God sees the best. He's seen me a long time. And he's seen you a long time. Amen? Don't you want to see what he sees? He has the best vision. Number three. God sees my sin. And God looked upon the earth, and he's still seeing it. And behold, it was corrupt, and it still is. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth, and we still do. Amen? He sees my sin. God sees me just as I am. He has the best vision. Nobody else can see me the way God can see me. Y'all hear me or not today? Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in His sight. But all things are what? Naked and open unto the eyes of Him with whom we have to do. God sees me just as I am. This message series on vision and this idea of vision can radically change your life. You need to see what God sees. Man, we put on, we fake it, we make it up. Are you kidding me? He sees everything about us. Amen? I'm glad He does. That's, that's, that's incredible that He does that and that I can realize that and own that. can change your life. Number five. God sees my heart. He sees my motive. He sees my will. But, O Lord of hosts, thou triest the righteous and seest, seest the reins and the what? Heart. Let me see thy vengeance on them, etc. For I've opened my cause to you. So he sees my heart. Luke 16, Jesus speaking. He said unto them, You are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knows your what? Hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the what? Sight of God. God sees my heart. Does God have the best vision so far, yes or no? Are you hearing me today? 
Well, this preacher said so and so. You know what? I really don't give a rip. I want to know what God sees. I want to know what God says. And God can use people, no doubt about it. But I want to know what He says. And by the way, everything I'm talking to you about, the Bible. Have you noticed the Bible up here today? Yes or no? Say. Good. Amen. Come on. God sees my troubles. Isn't that great? God has the best vision. He sees the mess. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me. And I've also seen the oppression where which the Egyptians oppressed them. Thou hast seen it. Thou beholdest mischief and spite to requite it with thy hand. The, the poor commits himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. God sees my trouble. What a great God we have. God has the best vision. I want to be apprehended by him, by the way. Amen? I want him to get a hold of me so I can see what he sees. And by the way, he has got a hold of me. And the fact that I'm putting scripture up here on the screen today and just talking so authoritatively, like this is the way it is, just a good sign he's got a hold of me. Amen? Y'all hear me or not? The Word of God. You need to believe this. God sees me and He knows me. O oh Lord, Thou hast searched me and what? You see me. You know me. I stayed with Psalm 139 for a bit right here. God sees me sitting up. Or sitting down. Rather. God sees me sitting down. Or standing what? God sees my ups and downs. You know my down-sitting, my uprising. You understand my thoughts afar off. So God sees my thoughts. You understand my thoughts afar off. God knows what I'm thinking. And guys, this shouldn't condemn you. Oh, I hate it. He knows what I was thinking last night. Oh, he knows what you're thinking the night before, too. He knows what you're thinking right now. This ought to be an encouragement to you. God knows my thoughts. And loves me anyway. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Is that crazy? Say, is that wonderful or what? God sees my path. And everywhere I go, thou compassed my path. My lying down. You're acquainted with all my what? He has the best vision. God sees and hears every word I speak or think. You don't like that one, do you? I love it. There's not a word in my tongue, O oh Lord, but you know it all together. God's God, and I'm not. I'm glad I've got a God who's God and who knows us all individually, knows everything about us. God has the best vision. Amen? Don't ever put some fellow like me on a high pedestal or some fellow on TV or no mess like that. Would you lift him high? Keep him lifted high up. Amen? He has the best vision. All the rest of us are sinners. Amen? Yes or no? Say. And we're on this journey to try to see like he sees. Come on. God sees where I've been and where I'm going. Oh, that's huge, isn't it? Say. God sees where I've been. He knows the crud. He knows the pain. But He knows I still have a future. And a time in my life when I didn't see how I could even have a future. I didn't even want to live. Hurt so bad. Struggling so hard. God could see a future. And I'm so grateful. He put several visionaries in my life. Who could see when I couldn't see because they were seeing with eyes of faith when I was seeing with eyes of pain and hurt isn't this good for our heart today listen God sees where I've been and where I'm going you've beset me behind and before and laid your hand upon me such knowledge is too wonderful for me it's high I can't attain under that kind of thinking that is crazy but You can. You can attain unto knowledge like that. It's by faith. 
It's by faith. It's by faith. I will never see supernaturally by supernatural means unless I am apprehended by the supernatural God. A lot of that on the screen to some of you today or maybe you're listening on radio or whatever. Listen. You don't see how any of that's true. But it might be because you've not been apprehended by a supernatural God. He loves you to pieces. How many would you say in your life, honestly in the room, you would say, God's love for me and my realization that He loves me and my acceptance of His love for me changed my whole life. <laughs> Can we thank Him for that? Come on, let's praise Him for that. Come on. <laughs> changed my whole life. I don't want to get sideways in the message because i got to quit. But last night I watched on TV some of these folks, ladies coming out against Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby, okay, on TV last night. And so many of them were saying they felt alone before living in the shadows. They were the only one. And the power that they now feel, the validation when others, and they feel more validated. And that's, if it's all true, they good. I'm glad they feel validated, okay? But I'm going to tell you something. As powerful as those ladies feel now, having validation, it can't compare with how you can feel when you know that God loves you. And when that is validated and personally accepted by you, I can't do that for you. You have to personally accept that God loves me. God loves me. I matter to Him. He gave His Son for me. And when you personally accept that and that validation and understanding that God loves you, that is called vision. Are y'all hearing me or not? Because God sees that. He sees it all the time. I wish they could see how much I love them. I love them. I love them. I gave my son for them. I love them. And we still walk around stupid. It's because we don't see. And we hurt and the mess. This is powerful, guys. Praise God. God has the best what? The best vision. I think I'm done, ain't I? Oh, I opened this letter, the email, alone. I read it going, wow, that was great, but that was long. There was more. I saw it Friday, this last part. We're standing in a vision. She wrote a poem about it. So let's read the poem. And by the way, she's going to hear this on YouTube, see it. And though she can't go to church, she's going to be blessed in Orlando, Florida. Amen. Come on. This is just her words. We're standing in a vision. Remember Philippians 4.13 when you read it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Standing in a vision. What does that mean, you ask? Why, Fellowship Church of Inglewood, who took on the task. What had started only as a vision, God turned into plans that we were divinely commissioned. In the beginning, the whole idea seemed crazy. As people were losing homes, businesses, and the stock market was lazy. How could such a small church in a small town of 14,000 and people aging achieve something so magnificent and outrageously amazing? At first, the spirit of failure in my mind tried tricking me in order to take root. I thought, there's no way we can do this, Lord, as I struggled to keep my brain off of mute. Although this seemed too hard, something amazing began to happen. God reminded me of stories in the Bible where doing the ridiculous was used as an achievement weapon. So I asked God to help me believe, and that's when my heart took action. And from then on, there was no more doubt, not even a fraction. I joined the others as we prayerfully opened our Bibles and our wallets. And from then on, as for our future, we could confidently call it debt free or die. Now I'll admit mass funerals did seem in order at first, but now 
there would be no need for the multiple hearse. It's not easy being a poet, is it? As days and months began to pass, the devil's arrows flew and traps were cast. Satan's plot hurt the mighty in our few, creating crippling wounds that ran deep through and through. Some of the pain was so crushingly bad, we could only lick our wounds as we felt deeply hurt and sad. However, as we continued to struggle, however, as we continued to struggle through the plans, God's grace came each morning to remind us that in His strength, yes, we can. So we continue to pray and give and call out to God while delays, demands, permits, equipment, and land excavation was hard. Challenge after challenge came to generate a fright, but God assured us the battle was already won. We were just standing to fight. Brick by brick and nail by nail, our faith, sacrifice, and God's strength in us prevailed. By that time, our faith in the power of Christ stood very, very stout. Because by then we were down for the cause and we were not down for the count. We were standing side by side with the greatest builder of all time. For we had Jesus Christ, the mighty son of God, directly on the line. So here we are in reality, in this building without technicality. For those of you who say you believe, have given your hearts to Christ and set yourselves free. You now have proof that God's word is not new. For what started only as a vision in one man's mind has now come true. So let this building be your testament of hope and put Philippians 4.13 under your spiritual microscope. Because now you can physically see that no matter what challenges, mountains, or brokenness your life may take you through, you can do all things in Christ who strengthens you too. Nita Turner, good job, Nita. Good job, Nita. You should be a preacher. Amen. Praise the Lord. Say it with me loud. One, two, three. God has the best vision. Amen.